I absolutely love that we now have retro cartridges filled with games these days. When I was a child, I would rent games like Super Metroid, Comic Zone, Primal Rage, and it would be like five bucks every weekend. The price of these games were expensive though. One game would set you back 30 to $50, and that was in 1990s money, so imagine inflation, right? Now we have retro consoles filled with them consoles that can be hacked to play them. You can even play games in your web browser. But there's nothing like the feel of an original console. When you turn on the TV and hear that static, then you pop the game in and press power. Pure nostalgia. They might be old, but playing classic games on a 30-year-old CRT, we're going to be transported back to the early 90s. So what if I want to play the original consoles, but all I have is just a few games and I want them all on one cartridge? Enter many of these EverDrive cartridges. Well, I say these, but really they're just cheap clones and copies of the original. These clone cartridges promise to do everything an EverDrive cartridge does, but at over half the price. And, as they said, if it sounds too good to be true, then it is. This is the best 1277 classic games over 830 plus classic games. I, I gotta tell you, the title rolls right off the tongue. Why not just call it the Sega in a cartridge? Anyways, the cartridge itself does look pretty cool, being a clear blue with an LED indicator and an SD card slot for the program itself. Really, the cartridge itself is just the hardware that goes through the console and the emulator that uses the games themselves from the ROM and SD cards to then push to the console, and the console does them magic. But the front art, while nice, has a modern Sonic on it, which looks okay, but doesn't belong in a, in a retro game cartridge like this, as it was introduced in the post-2000s. The background art is actually a Sega game that was introduced in the late 2000s, which is a classic collection of Genesis titles on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Oh, and the disgusting stretched out uh, rated T14 in the bottom left should give it away that this is not a premium product. But it's not always about about looks. Let's pop this baby in and see what it can do. When you start this off, you'll be greeted with a DOS-like prompt, which shows several options. Play game, select game, options, cheats, and toolbox. Options will offer several options that don't really work, like save states and SRAM backup, but most importantly, the region free selection, which permits you to play any games from any region, except that it doesn't work properly either. So yeah, it's kind, kind of worthless. Toolbox offers save load options or SRAM, which again, doesn't work. The device info gives you things like OS version firmware versions, uh, it also gives you the file system format, it will also tell you obvious things like if you have a CD-ROM attached or not, an SPI speed test update OS, and about, which will give you all the information about this, but please note, just because this gives you information about this device doesn't mean that this person actually made this device. Anybody can download these programs and slap them on a cartridge, which is what I think actually happened. Moving to select games, you are presented a list of games in order from the Genesis, then the Mega Drive, then some other extra games, SMS games, the 32X games, and finally, at the bottom, there are instructions, CD BIOS, and the Game Genie codebook. Each game had a listing in alphabetical order broken up into two parts. Selecting a game will bring up a loading prompt. Depending on the size of the game, it will erase the ROM on the file system and load it to the selected ROM. So that's basically how you select and play games. But the time it takes to load the game, especially if it is a two megabyte game, can be from one to two minutes. I'm not going to put you through how long it takes to load every game, but let me tell you, it took one minute, 17 seconds for this game to be loaded in. And what do I get for my wait? A warning screen that says this game is for NTSC Mega Drive systems, which is a paradox in itself. There is no Mega Drive NTSC. NTSC. The Mega Drive is what the Sega Genesis is in all other countries except for the Americas. It was changed for the NTSC region because of copyright disputes. Which begs the question, is 
this for Mega Drive or NTSC? Well, this is the NTSC Sega Genesis Model 2 that I'm using here. It's a little bit old, a little bit dusty, but it works fantastic. And uh, it doesn't work. It, it's, uh, it's a Mega Drive game, right? That, that's what it has to be because it doesn't work on an NTSC system. But remember, I selected the region-free format under options, so why didn't it load? Uh, region-free only works sometimes or not at all. That's what happened. But let's take it even further. Let's look under the selection screen here. This came from the Genesis games selection, so why why doesn't work? Uh, because there is no quality control. No one tested these ROMs that are put on here. And you can tell that because if you read the names, they're all jumbled up with coding words to show the type of ROM and formats on a lot of them. So no one took the time to go through, fix the names. Many of the games are even listed under the wrong names as well. So for example, I tried to load some classic Outrun and it loaded a different version of Outrun and the game works great there's nothing wrong with this version of Outrun it just wasn't titled correctly and there's not another Outrun game on here so my physical cartridge is the only way I'll be able to play it even though I have this EverDrive here so I like to play Street Fighter with my daughter and this really is why I bought this to get different versions to try out but when I loaded Street Fighter I got what I assumed to be some arcade version that was poorly ported it wasn't smooth it didn't sound good and there was a lot of sprite flicker then I went back and I loaded the other Street Fighter version and I was greeted with a red screen which soft locked the console the game I literally have right here won't work on this multi card I wanted to test some games that would work so I started with the games that I had Sonic 2 works flawlessly, sounds great, the frame rate is working just fine, there's no lag, no latency, I was speeding through Green Hell Zone just fine. I really enjoy that the classic Sega games work here, and that makes me happy, it gives me hope that there are other games that do work. So I wanted to try a much more rare game, Road Rash 3, a combat motorcycle racing game, this game kicks so much ass, and was made by EA before they became sellout shills. The music, the sound effects, frame rate, it's all there. There it works. This game works just like the original, which I had, and compared to it, in fact, it, it's great. There's nothing wrong with the multi-cart ROM of this. Road Rash 3 is a gem. It's a fantastic racing game that's never been done well since. If you've never played this game, this would be a great way to try it out if you had a Genesis and wanted to play it on original hardware, but honestly, I wish I could say that about all of these ROMs on this multi-cart. I loaded up some Aladdin, which sounded just like the classic Disney's Aladdin back in the 90s. This is a brutal Sega Genesis game, very unforgiving, but the controls work very tightly, they're good, it's a fantastic game filled with fantastic music and overall fun game. This game also worked just like the physical game I actually have. So that's three games that work and two games that just don't. I moved on to Vector Man, a Genesis exclusive with a fantastic background from back in the day. It even had a cool intro where you could bust up the Sega logo. The intro played just fine, sounded great, and the game started. The game is about a future world where the world's been taken over by evil forces and a trash robot known as Vector Man had to defeat the leader and take back Earth. It's tight, responsive, action shooter, really fun, uh, but also very difficult. A game just worked fine. It, it had no issues whatsoever. I wanted to finish testing with one of the games from the six pack, the classic Sonic the Hedgehog. What's a Genesis test without the original Sonic Green Hill Zone run? And to my delight, the game started up and ran fluent, solid FPS, Yes, no delay in the buttons, no sound issues, and 38 seconds later, Green Hill Act 1 is done. I wanted to try one more thing though, the 32X, and after loading up the ROM, it didn't work. Which implies that again, the cartridge really isn't doing anything in the form of emulation and instead it's all on the console. Assuming I had the 32X attachment, it would load. I don't have it, so I can't test it. There are a lot of fantastic games on this system. Tons of Genesis games, tons of Mega Drive games, tons of Sega Master System games, and the 32X, as aforementioned. However, I don't understand why these clone cartridges continue to be produced with the thought that more is better. You shovel on some garbage extra games. You shovel on there versions of the same game with slight variations. You put on there 
junk games that aren't even Genesis or Mega Drive games. And instead, if you just took the time to check the Genesis ROM and the Mega Drive ROMs, you would have around 1,200 of both if you put the full library on there. And due to all the junk, the terribly titled games, and the games that just straight up don't work, I really can't recommend this device. The Mini Genesis can be bought for around $80, which is nearly double the price of this cartridge. However, it's also the cleanest HDMI output a Genesis can get, and can be modded to play tons of Genesis games with the original controller. And there's always the ability to get your own ROMs and your own EverDrive, and know exactly what games you have that will work on it. A real EverDrive, not a knockoff. I hope you guys enjoyed this in-depth review, so if you are on the fence about buying any of these clone devices, just know what you're getting. Even if you know what you're getting, just be ready to realize how janky and crappy they are. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and share it, and let other people know to save them around 40 bucks.